Now, you may remember in our last programme, we featured the murder of 55-year-old Paul Massey. He is said to have been loved and hated in equal measure and known to be a central figure in one of the most ruthless crime sagas in Manchester's history. Today's bite-sized episode shares the life story of Britain's Paul Massey, famously known as Mr. Big. Join us as we shed light on the different layers of Massey's life, exploring his rise to power, his dual personality of respected businessman and feared gangster, and the profound impact of his actions on Salford's history. Paul Massey's legacy is so vast it won't be eclipsed for a long time. However, the story not only sheds light on the allure of dominance he had in the criminal underworld, but also serves as a cautionary tale, offering a chilling glimpse into the ruthless power struggles that can consume even the most formidable figures. Massey's story ultimately leaves a haunting legacy that lingers long after his violent demise. Paul Massey was born on the 7th of January 1960 in an inner city suburb of Salford, Ordsaw. He was one of six children born to Rose and John Massey. Raised by his parents, young Paul's life took a fateful turn when he encountered legal trouble for causing damage to an abandoned house. This incident led to his enrollment in an approved school, an event he later attributed to fueling his resentment towards the system. He believed that being separated from his parents during that time left a lasting bitterness. People who knew him during his younger days described Massey as someone who didn't conform to the expected mold. Despite not being physically imposing, he had a certain charm and his own set of principles. His appearance often resembled that of a street-smart youngster, opting for jeans and trainers over flashy attire. What set him apart even more, though, was his refusal to fit the typical gangster image. Unlike others who sought dominance through force, Massey didn't try to establish himself as a boss figure at the top of a hierarchy. This unconventional approach added to the intrigue surrounding his persona. As Paul Massey matured, he transformed himself from a wayward youth into a legitimate businessman. In the 1990s, he established several security companies, which ironically would later be accused of becoming fronts for his criminal enterprises. During this time, he attracted the attention of Damian Noonan and his gang, who took control of nightclub doors across Manchester, reportedly with Massey's assistance. In 1992, Salford was gripped by riots that left a scar on the city. Although Paul Massey vehemently denied any involvement in the chaos, he was branded by Councillor Joe Burroughs as the city's Mr. Big. This label, intended to highlight his alleged role in the unrest, had unintended consequences painting him as a more significant figure than he might have been. Massey's involvement in criminal activities came to the forefront during a time of turmoil in Salford. A documentary was being filmed, covering a deadly feud that had engulfed the city. The dispute, which would escalate to involve guns, grenades, machetes, and multiple murders, saw Massey accused of playing a mediator's role between rival crime groups. Rumors of protection rackets swirled around him, with pubs and clubs allegedly paying to avoid their premises being targeted. Massey's family vehemently denied these accusations, although retired senior police officer Clive Dorskull alleged that Massey had set up protection rackets in his early 20s. The journey of Paul Massey was marked by a series of frequent arrests, with him managing each time to elude legal consequences. However, in 1994, he showcased his influence by mediating a truce between two rival gangs, solidifying his authority within the criminal underworld. His security firm's rapid growth and perceived legitimacy even garnered contracts with local government entities, underscoring his rising prominence. Despite a flourishing criminal career, the Salford crime boss faced a pivotal reckoning moment. In 1999, a drastic turn of events led to his imprisonment for a staggering 14 years. The incident that sealed his fate involved a brutal stabbing on Whitworth Street, a bustling hub within the heart of the city's club district. 
he fled to Amsterdam but was eventually arrested. Despite spending so many years in prison, however, Massey continued to have an impact on Sulphur Streets. Following his release, authorities detained him again on accusations of money laundering, but he was later freed. Massey stated at this point that he was the target of a witch hunt. In 2012, Massey announced his bid for the position of Mayor of Salford, showing a side that appeared committed to public service. He promised that if elected, he would take the job unpaid, promising to be the voice of the people. However, he finished 7th out of 10 candidates, receiving less than 5% of the poll. He also garnered attention the same year for intervening to help an elderly woman whose home was burglarized, leading to a Robin Hood-like perception of him in certain circles. This perception was potentially the nudge that made him enter an election for the position of mayor. Notably, his significant name recognition within the local community positioned him as somewhat of a local celebrity. While adept at engaging with people, he also carried a reputation for swift and forceful action when faced with opposition or perceived threats to his associates. There existed a complex and unsettling aspect to his persona, which some attribute to the challenging environment of his upbringing. Paul Massey forged an affiliation with the formidable A-Team, a group that had taken the reins from the once dominant Salford firm he had once led. Embraced as a father figure by many within the A-Team, Massey's deep involvement in the violent conflict would ultimately become his tragic undoing. On a fateful evening of July 26, 2015, the life of Paul Massey came to a violent and abrupt end. Having parked his silver BMW at a bargain booze store, he proceeded with his routine, purchasing a bottle of Bacardi and a few liters of Coke. However, unbeknownst to him, an ominous stranger trailed closely behind. Massey was met with a chilling scene as he stepped out of his vehicle at 7.27 p.m. A tall, athletic assailant, concealed behind combat attire and a false beard, rapidly approached. Armed with an Uzi submachine gun, the attacker unleashed a hail of bullets, heralding the onset of a tragic sequence Massey had long anticipated. The barrage of bullets tore through Massey's body in a brief yet chaotic span. Bone fragments scattered, Bacardi shattered, and fingers were severed as the onslaught continued. Despite the agony, Massey managed to find cover behind trash bins, mustering the strength to call for emergency assistance. Massey was killed by Mark Fellows, nicknamed the Iceman, who fired a barrage of 18 bullets into him, ending the life of a man who had been both feared and revered. Paul Massey's death left a void in the criminal landscape of Salford, but it did not quell the violence. In fact, the aftermath of his murder saw an escalation in gang violence, with Manchester police suspecting that the shootings of a woman and a young child were linked to retribution for Massey's killing. After three long years, on June 1, 2018, Mark Fellows was apprehended and charged with the heinous murders of both Paul Massey and his close associate, Liverpool gangster John Kinsella. The culmination of an intense investigation led to Fellows' subsequent conviction. The court's verdict echoed the weight of responsibility, as Fellows was handed a sentence of whole life imprisonment. Apart from his criminal stature, Paul Massey's life was anchored by his role as a father and grandfather. At the time of his tragic demise, Massey was survived by five children and eight grandchildren who bore witness to a man whose complexities extended far beyond the notorious label he had earned. In the end, the cycle of life completes itself. Everything you do, everything you say, every choice you make sooner or later comes back around. Paul Massey's life unfolds like a gripping movie, spanning from his years as a troubled youth to becoming a prominent figure in Europe's criminal scene. His journey sheds light on the delicate balance between legal endeavors and unlawful activities, with moments of redemption punctuated against sudden outbursts of violence. As his life story comes to a close, Massey's narrative serves as a powerful lesson, underlining the extensive harm that organized crime can inflict on both individuals and communities. His legacy remains a somber cautionary tale urging us to reflect on the far-reaching consequences of such involvements 
and the lasting impressions they leave behind.